The Great Search brought to you by Adafruit to DigiKey. Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering every single week to show you, yes, you, how to find things on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search of the Week this week? Okay, this week um, I was working on this little infrared emitter. And uh, infrared LEDs are really useful for controlling remote control stuff, which there's still a lot of. Like TVs still use IR remotes. Um, stereos often use IR remotes. Air conditioning units. In fact, I just saw a post on... Um, on Hacker News about somebody who uh, used an Arduino to turn on and off the air conditioning unit in their computer room uh, to keep the computers nice and cool. And they did an automatic way by just having the Arduino like every three hours or whatever, or when the temperature changed um, to emit the IR codes to turn the uh, air conditioner on and off. So let's go to the overhead real fast and I'll show the design. And I'll show how I spec the LED. Um, so for IR LED, so this is, you know, power ground and signal wires come out here. Uh, you want to have a power FET because IR LEDs are different than normal LEDs. Normal LEDs, you know, indicators, non-illuminating LEDs, you really want to drive them maybe 5, 10, or 20 milliamps. That's kind of what the LEDs are designed for. Infrared LEDs are different. Uh, the dyes are much bigger and they're often heat sunken, heat synced. And they're intended to uh, allow you to put continuously 100 milliamps through them, and they can peak at one amp. So, like, really, like, they're, they're meant to blast, not for a very long time. You want little spikes for the signal, the infrared signal, that is modulated at 38 kilohertz or so. But you do want to blast that very, very powerfully. So this breakout board just, uh, you know, you can see the signal comes in, there's this FET, there's two choke resistors, just 10 ohms, just, you know, you should have something there, even if you're drawing, you know, an amp through it, you want to have some resistance, uh, so you'll get thermal runaway. And then I have two IR LEDs, maybe I'll wire this up again really fast so people can see the, the two directions. There's um, two SMT LEDs, so this is the LEDs off, and then I'll... Hold on, I'll turn them on. Okay, so now the IR LEDs are on. So you see there's two IR LEDs. One is um, right angle and one is vertical. Uh, and then, you know, this way you get nice coverage. This is continuous, you know, obviously I'm powering it continuously. Um, and I've measured it's only 100 milliamps, so this is, this is totally safe to do. But in general, you wouldn't want to um, have the IR LED on all the time. You would, again, flash it. Still, um, to make this design inexpensive, I wanted to go with SMT LEDs, so there's no through-hole process, no hand soldering, um, even if it means that the LEDs maybe are not quite as bright, we'll see, maybe we can get them as bright, um, it just makes it a lot easier to manufacture. So let's go to the computer, and, ooh, it's actually a little toasty, the circuit board. So these are the IR LED that I normally uh, use, we use this in the TV gone kit and a lot of projects. Um, this is the uh, IR3333 uh, 5mm infrared LED. Um, the wavelength is 940 nanometers. That's important to know. There's some infrared LEDs that want 800, but 940 is like 99% of remote controls. Um, they are, you know, usually made with this chip material. The forward voltage is quite low, it's usually like 1.5 three volts, um, much lower than you'd think, or 1.7 volts. But again, the continuous forward current, 100 milliamps, continuous, and then peak for forward current is one amp. So the important thing um, that I want to note is the uh, flux output for the radiant intensity. So this is how much, you know, how much light is being emitted. Obviously the angle varies, you know, sometimes you get 15, sometimes you get 40 degrees, but basically 20 milliamps, you're gonna get 20 milliwatt, um, 100 milliamps, you're gonna get 85 um, milliwatt, and then current, forward current, one amp max, 750. And that's, these LEDs are quite good. Uh, we have turned off many an LED, with uh, many a TV with these LEDs on the TV be gone. Um, you know, with 100 to 1 amp current draw. So uh, I want to find an LED that's similar to this, but again, service mount. So, where are we gonna go? I'm gonna go to DigiKey. Glad you asked. 
So let's look for infrared LED. And note that there is, um, you know, this, this section UV infrared invisible will go here. And if you feel like it, if you don't want to even have that, you know, sub search, you can go uh, just to the cat category. So the first thing is that, you know, I only want active products and I want uh, only the infrared and you know, infrared comma visible, not exactly sure what that means. So I'll just select it. Um, next up, the wavelength is important to me because I need, you know, it, it needs to be the 940-ish nanometer. I can't use any other color. So I'm going to scroll down and find 940. And I'm okay with like maybe 950. You know, that's not the end of the world. 935. And you know, it can be plus or minus a couple nanometers. Okay, and then let's look. Okay, we're starting to get some good LEDs. Some of these are surface mount. Some of these do look like the right angle. Quite nice. But let's um, let's make sure that I'm looking only at surface mount. I'm gonna do surface mount, surface mount, right angle, and and dash, just in case you know something filters through. And then, so now I'm looking, okay, these are looking really good. And there's actually quite a few options. And another nice thing is they're all in stock, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so next up, let's filter, because a lot of these have, um, the radiant intensity is, is kind of low. You know, some of these are as little as 0.5 milliwatts. I want something pretty powerful. I want something that I can drive at uh, high current. Like, and also some of these don't have high forward current. I want to do at least 100 milliamps. So, um, although I don't completely trust this number, to be honest, this DC forward max, because that, again, might be continuous, whereas um, if I'm going to um, be sending a spiky 38 kilohertz signal, maybe it's okay. Uh, that said, I do want to get a slightly better um, radiant intensity out of here. So, uh, remember the previous one was 80 milliwatts or so at 100 milliamps um you know let's do maybe 60 and up of course some of these are at higher currents but i feel like if i get this uh you know i definitely don't want anything less than 60 milliwatts at 100 milliamps okay apply and then finally i think i'm only going to look at stuff that's normally stocking and let's see what we've got here so a lot of options. Uh, some of these are definitely not right angle. Like this is definitely not uh, right angle style. Still, it's kind of good to, to see what's available. <coughs> Let's change this to um, right angle only. And we'll see what uh, what comes up. So this is not a lot of options here, which is really, which is actually kind of good. So some of these are interesting. So this is like, you know, it's a through hole LED with like little bent legs. Um, Kind of cool, but not super excited to pick and place this. It's a little bit of a weird package. Uh, some of these look really good. You know, you can see they're thicker so that they'll sit flat on the PCB. Um, now this one is a kind of, kind of a cute. It's got, actually got the black little emitter look to it. Let's um, let's look at what's up with the radiant intensity. Some of these don't have the radiant intensity indicated, so we'd have to look it through the data sheet. That's how it is. Um, but let's look at, uh, let's just sort by price and see what, what comes up here. So this one looks really good. Uh, these are good, but they're not available. So that's kind of a bummer. Oh, let's look at um, pricing with uh, 1,000 pieces. So I can actually get like a good sense of it. So these are out of stock. So that's, that's, not, that's not great. Um, let's see. This is, oh, orientation. Oh, I can check the orientation as well. Let's do side view. So that gets rid of some that slipped through. Okay, ooh, these are good. So this is side view, side view. Note that even though this image is showing it pointing up, it's actually, you can see it's thick. It's meant to be side mounted, um, not, uh, not front mounted, it looks like. And it looks like there's a couple good options. So I like, I like these, but let's look at, um, this top one, because this says 100 milliamps forward current and 92 uh, milliwatts. So that's kind of good looking at the data sheet. Okay, so good news is this is really side view. 
There's a little uh, mechanical pad in the center, so that's good. Let's look at this. Okay, infrared. Looks like you can do a peak of 1,000 milliamps, which is nice. Uh, forward current at 100 milliamps, 940, 92, which is good. That's a good amount of brightness. They don't have the radiant intensity at one amp, but it does say you can um, emit at one amp. So, you know, I think they're like, well, you don't, it doesn't look like you get, oh, no, you do. No, oh, it looks like you can get, it shows you that it's almost linear. So at 200 milliamps, you'll get 200 almost uh, percent of the radio intensity of 100 milliamps. So I guess that's better than nothing. Again, most of these don't get actually driven at one amp. They get usually driven at about 100 milliamps. But it looks like you can you can max it out as long as you have a duty cycle of under one percent, which you know you would be for infrared. So this is a, this is what I'm going to go with. This is a nice uh, LED. I, I like the nice uh, thick pads, mechanical uh, brightness is equivalent to the five millimeter LED, and um, the price is really good too. The price is, you know, 20 cents or less in quantity. And it's in stock. And Congratulations, Inalux.